Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Steph and I'm on the social media team at Sage and today we're going to go through a couple of my favorite recipes when you need like a healthy afternoon snack. So I've got chickpea mash and chunky guacamole and we're going to start with the chickpea mash but the best thing about both of these recipes is that they don't actually need a recipe and you can have fun with it, you can change it up based on what's in your fridge um, and what tastes good to you. So um, we'll start with the chickpeas. So I'm using a can today. Um, obviously if you soak and cook your own chickpeas that's ideal but um, for time's sake I just use a can. And when I'm buying canned foods I always look for um, non-BPA lining. And um, that the ingredients are just um, organic chickpeas in this one, sea salt, and water. So there's no preservatives in there or any additives um, that are sometimes added to canned foods. So I'm just going to strain and rinse these guys. And uh, some people like to remove the skin from their chickpeas. Um, I've read that it can help with um, like digestive issues if you get like really bloated or um, your stomach gets a little upset after you eat them. So if you do want to remove the um, skins, you can either like lay them out on a paper towel and just kind of rub them all off, or they just really like pinch out. If you just pinch it, it comes right right off the skin. Um, and you can just discard the skin and you'll be left with lots of smooth chickpeas. Um, I've never had an issue, so I just leave them on, but just know that that's available to you. And I've heard that if you make hummus with them, taking the skin off makes the hummus extra creamy. So now I've got my small bowl of chickpeas and I'll just um, let you know what I've got here on my counter for it. So I've got apple cider vinegar, um, extra virgin olive oil, some Dijon mustard, I've got half a lemon, some fresh cut um, fennel, some fresh celery, fresh dill, um, half of a small, small shallot here, um, salt and pepper, and chili flakes. So I'm going to start with adding in my liquid ingredients, so the lemon, apple cider vinegar, olive oil, and Dijon, um, because I'm going to mash the chickpeas up so it makes it much easier if there's a little extra um, liquid in there um, before you add like the fennel and the crunchy um, the celery and stuff can get, get in the way of mashing. So I'll add it in the lemon juice. I just use half a lemon and I find that that's plenty but and then just a little drizzle of olive oil. It doesn't need much, but there we go. And then some Dijon mustard just adds a nice little bit of extra flavor. So I'm just going to add in just like a small spoonful. And the apple cider vinegar is the only thing in this entire recipe that I measure um, because I have overdone it in the past and it's really powerful. So I'm just going to put in um, two teaspoons of this guy. So now for mashing. Actually, before I um, before I mash, I like to add in the shallots as well. This is optional, um, but I like the chance to like mix in the flavor a little bit more. Shallots I always have on hand because they're so good added into like soups or stir fries or I, I have a kale salad recipe that I love adding shallots to with like tahini and nutritional yeast and lemon and I find that they're not a very they're not super powerful um, and they just add a little extra um, zing to, to to dishes so I'm just gonna mix it up really finely I 
just used like that was like half of a half a quarter of a half of a shallot so whatever that is that's how much I put in but again err on the side of like less is more when you first make this and then try it out so I'm mashing with a fork today but you can definitely use a food processor now my eyes are watering from the shallots a little bit but um you can definitely use a food processor or a high-speed blender on like on pulse a pulse setting until it gets to the consistency that you want it um, depending on whether you are going to have it on toast or if you're um, adding it to a bowl you might want to leave it a little chunkier um, i'm going to kind of go in between oh my gosh my eyes are really watering now should have cut this before that's okay don't mind me um, so I like to leave some that's still pretty chunky, and this takes some time, and this dish kind of reminds me of this tuna salad that I had when I was younger. It was like, we had it all the time, and it was like canned tuna, pickles, relish, and mayo or something, and some dill. And uh, I find this can be used anywhere that you would have a tuna salad, except it's all plant-based. So obviously this way of mashing takes a little bit longer. But it is doable, and it's not hard. If you have a masher, you can use that as well. So, oh my gosh, my eyes. This is so funny. This would be happening while I'm streaming live. That's the beauty of lives, you get to see it. So if you happen to be making this with me or if you're making it later and your eyes are watering, you know you're not the only one. All right, so I'm starting to feel good about this consistency. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more. And chickpeas are like a total staple in my diet. I always have them on hand and they're easy. You can just like throw them in a pan and saute them, add them to a salad, have them in a bowl. Sometimes I mix them with like black beans and we um, will have them like, like a black bean garlic taco sort of thing. They're super easy, super flexible and a great way to just get a little bit extra protein and fiber. I'm going to dry off my hands here. Okay, so I'm doing it a little bit more mash um, because I'm going to have this on toast. So I'll show you what it's starting to look like here. So you can see there's still um, whole ones in there, but I'm leaving, leaving some whole ones but mashing it up nicely. So that's the hardest part done. This off. And now we will add some celery. So this is just one stalk of some fresh celery for that extra crunch that I love. Um, and then I've got, this is half a ball of fresh fennel. So um, if you're not familiar or don't cook with fennel that often, this is what it looks like. Um, and to eat it, I'll when I'm cutting it up, I'll just cut the stalks off first and then cut the bulb in half, do a little triangle cut to remove the core, and then you're left with all this good stuff um, that you can add in. We have it in salads like every night. I'm obsessed with this flavor. And then I pick off all of this stuff on the top, you can see here, um, and add it into dishes for some extra flavor. So um, this is here. I'm going to put that in. So that's the fennel that I cut just before going live. It takes a little bit of time. And then this guy's already washed, so I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit from the top. I love this. It smells so good. And if you guys love fennel as much as I do, you would love our Eater's Digest roll-on. I can't smell fennel without thinking of it, which is also my favorite roll-on at Sage, so it makes perfect sense. So I put that in there, and now I've got some fresh dill that's already washed, and I'm just gonna chop it up. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. There we 
go. Add with lots of dill. So I'll throw all that in. And that is pretty much it, except I'm going to add in some salt and pepper. And this dish I find you really don't need that much salt because of the lemon and the apple cider vinegar. It gives it that like acidity and a little bit of zing that you don't need too much salt. But oh yeah, this is starting to look like such a good salad. And so I'll do a little bit of salt, just a couple cranks. Pepper, I add pepper to everything. My friends actually make fun of me for it, but I love pepper. Put some pepper in there, and then I love a little extra kick, so I am also going to add in just some um, crushed red pepper chili flakes as well. Okay, my eyes finally stopped watering from the shallots, so now that it's temporary, and I just mix that around. I think it might need a little more olive oil. Maybe like a touch more olive oil. If it's on the dry side, you can always add more. So starting with less, we all know, makes it easier. And that is it, you guys. And I'm gonna have this on toast as soon as we finish up here. So you can see there's lots of good stuff in there. It's super crunchy and delicious. You can eat it by itself. I actually had this for lunch yesterday and it was so good. So I'm gonna set that aside here. If you guys recreate it, please share. If you add any different ingredients, I'm always looking for a new way to do it. So. Please comment if you do. I'm just gonna rinse this dill off my cutting board and we're gonna make some guac. Essentially, it's just guac, but it can be used in many ways, whether it's just as a dip, like traditional guac, or if you wanna add it in on a wrap, in a sandwich, scoop a little extra onto your bowl, whatever your favorite bowl is. So, I've got my ingredients out here. I'm just using one avocado today, but if you're making for a few more people, you can definitely double this really easily. So I've got onion that, thank God, I already chopped up so that I don't have to cry in front of you all again. Um, and cilantro. So avocado already pitted, onion, Tomatoes are in here, you can't see them, but I'm just using um, cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes. That might be the same thing, but um, I'm going to use half a lemon, jalapeno, and cilantro. So, first things first, get the skin off of our apple. This one is like perfectly ripe. I had it in my fruit basket with bananas, and I find that that makes them ripen quicker. Don't ask me why but maybe Google it and see if it's true, but that works for mine. Um, another hot tip is our burlap sage bags um, that you can get in store. If you just throw your avocado in there on the counter, it ripens a lot quicker as well. So give it a try, because there's nothing worse than when you want to make guac or avocado toast and you have a rock hard avocado. Um, so I've got that in here. I'm going to start with adding in my lemon because um, it softens up the avocado and makes it um, easier to mash it up. So I'm just going to use half today to start. I've got my little handy apartment size juicer. I'm just squeezing that in on top. You can also use a lime, it's just as good, but I've only got lemons, so that's what's happening here today. All right, so now I'm going to mash this up as well. Lemon 
just makes it a little easier. And I like to leave it pretty chunky, but depending on, because I like to have mine on toast, but if you're going to use it as a dip, like you can completely mash it up. I always end up with avocado all over my hands, but that's okay. If you have a masher or two, that probably works better, but again, in my little apartment, and I have limited space in my kitchen, and a fork does the job just fine. So, all right, that's mashed good enough for me. So, um, I'm just gonna dump in this onion. I probably used like a fifth of a, just a sweet onion, and I minced it up really finely, um, and I find it sounds daunting to have raw onion in here, but with the other flavors and the lemon, it just, it mixes in really nicely, and um, it kind of reminds me of like combining like pico de gallo with guacamole, which is like the most beautiful combination for me, in my opinion. Um, and now I've got here some chunky, or some tomatoes to make it extra chunky. So I just like to cut these guys in half or quarter them. And you can use any kind of tomato. There's no right or wrong way to do this. But I love getting a big bite of a tomato in here, especially on toast. And if you have it on toast, you could like put these on afterwards, like on top, maybe sprinkle some feta on there or whatever. So I'm just gonna dump those in. You can mince them up too if you want them smaller for if you're having this like as a dip. Um, it's super easy if you're having like family over, people in your level. Um, this is an absolute crowd pleaser. And then comes magic ingredient, in my opinion, is jalapeno. So I always have these on hand because I add them to like pretty much everything I eat. I love spice. Um, and I find that the green part on the outside is not what's actually spicy, it's the seeds. So if you want to experiment with jalapeno, but you are not a huge fan of spice, what you can do is just cut it up and make sure you rinse all the seeds off of the, um, off of the part you're putting in. I personally like to keep the seeds but you still get great flavor just with the outside pepper part and by discarding the seeds so i'm just gonna put i don't know how many seeds i have in here maybe like 15 i don't know that's a rough estimate um all right so i'm gonna scoop that in there probably if i have this on toast like i'll even add more jalapeno afterwards on top of my toast, but mix that around. That's starting to look so good. We've just got a couple things left to add. So we've got um, salt and pepper. So I like a little more salt in this dish than in the chickpea mash um, because it doesn't have like the vinegars and stuff. It does have lemon or lime, but so I'm using um, pink Himalayan sea salt. And then, of course, some pepper. And then I also like to experiment a little bit with some spices to add in here. Um, and I didn't share them in the recipe because they're totally up to you and you can be whatever you want. But I love like smoked paprika, um, chili powder, um, cumin even is really nice. Um, but today I'm just gonna do smoked paprika. And if you're like a spice, maniac like myself then you could add in um, some cayenne if you want to but just a little bit to give it a little extra awesome this looks so good i wish i could share this with all of you but i hope that you'll try it out this weekend it's supposed to be sunny and beautiful in vancouver so you could make this, you could throw it in the Tupperware and take it to a nice big open park or a field or somewhere or the beach that you could enjoy it with some chips. 
Cilantro goes really beautifully in this. So I'm just gonna rip up some cilantro here. Um, if you're wondering, this is how I keep my cilantro fresh in my fridge. I think I bought this like at least a week ago and it keeps it from getting all wilted. So just some cold water in the bottom. I put the stems in, I wash it and then it's ready to go. So you could either, yeah, you could also mix this throughout if you're a huge cilantro fanatic but I just put some on top and it's done. Look at that. Beautiful, delicious dip. And that is it, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in with me and making this this morning. I hope that you found some inspiration for a new healthy snack. I like to keep the chickpea mash in my fridge so that I've been working from home for the past five months. So I'm like, if I'm craving something salty or, you know, that little extra something around 2 p.m. to be able to pull that out and have some crackers or by itself or on toast um, really fuels my body well and keeps me from reaching for something a little less healthy. So um, enjoy. Please share if you make it and we will see you soon.